We are uh, live with a webinar. <laughs> Hello! Uh, welcome to uh, a webinar from Weld. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to create interactive web content. I'm Tom. I am Selma. Um, so let me just open my presentation. Yeah. So yeah, we will talk about interactive web content. And uh, we're live on YouTube, so if you have any questions, just uh, write it in the comment section. And yeah. I will later sit down and answer your questions. So, yeah. And you can reach us on Tom at Weld.io and Selma at Weld.io. Yeah. Uh, and we'll repeat these uh, ad addresses at the end as well. Yeah. And uh, this is our agenda for today. We'll be talking about uh, Weld, uh, interactive content. Uh, Tom will give examples of content and we will show you a tutorial. That's right. Yeah. So this is a picture that demonstrates the, uh, the marketing department. Mm -hmm. But they have a quite a hard job today managing all departments. And uh, we understand that it's a struggle for yeah. many companies. Yeah, demands from, from upper management maybe. Um, and you're trying to maybe realize your creative vision with the help of IT department or a web agency, but it's not always that easy. Yeah, and then you have pressure from the CEO as mm -hmm. well. So in our dream world, uh, we think that online you should create everything free. And we don't believe that everybody uh, could uh, or should be able to manage coding. Uh, it's, I think, 0.2% uh, that can do it in the world. Uh, but our dream world is that you could publish anywhere, be creative anywhere, and uh, that the marketing department also could have yeah, some insight to mm -hmm. this. Uh, and well, it's fully responsive as well. Well, uh, we're going to get that, but the main thing here is actually that uh, well allows you to be creative without coding. Yeah, and it goes into all CMS systems as well. We're going to jump into some of the features of, of Weld. Yeah. This is some of the benefits using Weld. Um, you can see below. I think we will get to it later. Yeah, but, um, basically you can be more free. Uh, you can depend less on external developers, on agencies and your IT department. Uh, you can also be more creative. Um, you can get more things done in a, a shorter period of time and with less resources. So you save money. Exactly. So we're having a look at a few features of Weld. Yeah, you have a free form design tool, uh, which means it's quite like PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. It's drag and drop based and uh, you can create almost anything in Weld. Mm -hmm. uh, it's responsive, so you can have it on any devices, uh, an iPad, a computer, a watch, a TV. It goes on all devices and it's really responsive. And you can embed uh, some content of your site in Weld. So you don't need to have the whole site in Weld. The most uh, websites that use us have their own CMS system, but they have some uh, embedded sites. And as you can see, the red formula is Weld content. Right. So if you have a CMS like WordPress or EpiServer or uh, Magento, uh, Weld easily sort of plugs into that and you can create spaces in your, your site that's managed by, by Weld. Exactly. You can easily create animations, uh, just drag and drop based. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an example of a quite easy animation that only takes maybe less than one minute to do in Weld. Exactly. Th that's the focus for this webinar. So we're going to deep, deep, uh, dive more deeply into that in a, in a minute. You can uh, also do uh, analytics, A-B testing and scheduling in Weld. And collaborate with your team. So if you have uh, many different Weld accounts, you can easily collaborate in a team and uh, yeah, do work together. Work together. A bit like how you work in, in Google Docs. Exactly. So that's the features, but uh, now for the main event, we're going to talk about interactive content. That's exactly. the main subject here. Uh, the topic for today's webinar. So what is interactive content? Well, the definition of interactive content is that it engages the users or visitors. 
so you probably have a lot of content already on blogs and on YouTube, videos, uh, written posts and so on that uh, is more about passive consumption for the user, but interactive content is the opposite. It's about, about engaging actively in the content. And why is this a good thing? Well, interacting is the start of a conversation with a user or a visitor. Um, and we think that a conversation is what happens before conversion. So you have to start engaging with the user in some way before they are willing to buy something from you. And that conversation could happen in a chat with your help desk uh, or um, on phone uh, or in, your, in a store, but it could also happen when you engage with a piece of interactive content on your site. You learn more about your products, your brand, your culture and so on in, an, in, an, um, in a dialogue um, instead of uh, just passively consuming content. Um, there's a couple of, there's basically infinite types of content, but, but the, the main ones that are popular right now, I would say, are infographics of different kinds, presenting information, values, uh, statistics, and so on, in maybe uh, with graphs or in another way. And, and these infographics can be more or less static, or they can be also animated and interactive, which makes them more uh, powerful. Uh, another type of interactive content are quizzes uh, and surveys of different kinds, very popular on Facebook. Um, and a third popular type of content are calculators or different assessment forms. Maybe you um, can calculate how much your uh, uh, monthly interest going to be on your house and so on. We're going to look at a, at a specific example like that. Uh, actually, let's have a look at a couple of examples. So I'm going to open up um, the gallery page on well.io. So if you go to well.io slash gallery, we have a bunch of, of um, examples and uh, I'm going to look at a few of those. Here's a little demo that you also saw uh, on a slide just previously. Um, it's um, for an e-commerce site and it's a replacement for a, a traditional carousel, image carousel. You have those sort of sliding images uh, that are very popular, but actually they are not great in presenting multiple products because uh, people focus too much on what's happened in the first two images, perhaps. So here's another way, uh, basically presenting different products um and you show information when you hover with the mouse um and show another one here's some more advanced animation uh, example it looks more dramatic than it actually is uh, building animations like these are quite simple in in weld but basically i have uh, objects flying in the background and windows popping up when I hover over these uh, models. Um, here's an example of one of those calculators I, I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, so here's a slider where you can input how many miles of car driving you do, I believe, on a yearly basis. Uh, and we present how many acres of trees are needed to absorb the carbon dioxide uh, with little animations happening as well. Uh, and the final example for now uh, is this very simple uh, il illustration. It's a phone and you can sort of break it apart with, uh, with a click of a button and put it back together. And this is also very simple uh, to do in, in Weld. Um, so that's a few showcases. So I'm going to actually dive into the Weld itself and show yeah. you uh, how you can do a few things uh, like this. And I will go back to you later uh, because I will sit and answer some questions. Yeah, but you can, you can stay on camera maybe and, and just uh, and, uh, answer in the chat. If you, if, so if you have any questions already, just type them in the chat. And I'm some, sitting uh, here. Yeah, someone ready. will be uh, answering them already. Yes. Okay, let's go. So, um, uh, first of all, this is, um, okay. Um, I'm now inside uh, the Weld tool. Um, I'm not gonna do 
a full uh, walkthrough of Weld because we have other uh, uh, tutorial videos and so on on the Weld.io uh, that explains more the basics of Weld. Um, but in short, Weld is a tool a bit similar to Keynote and PowerPoint. Um, you can draw things, you can animate them, you can publish. Um, and up here you have a toolbar where you can create objects. Uh, on the side, on the right side, you have a panel where you can uh, change formatting, colors, fonts, and stuff like that. Uh, on the left side, you have your screens or pages inside your product. Um, so jumping straight into the interactive features of Weld. There's basically two ways you can do interactivity in Weld. One is super easy and basic uh, and quite limited. Um, and the other one is quite advanced. So the, the simple system is called object states and you find it in the bottom uh, right corner of Weld. You have uh, normally you have buttons here that says what responsive layout you're you're working in, but you can click the little gray arrows down here, and it changes into three green buttons instead. So you have one button called normal, one called mouse over, and one called click. And here I can apply different formatting based on an object is is uh, you having the mouse over the the the, uh, the button you're hovering with with the mouse over. Uh, and when you're clicking on the object. Uh, and these states only apply to one object or the object being clicked or hovered upon. So um, it's very easy to use it. You basically, I just, um, be before I'm just gonna preview to see what this looks like now. So I have a, a button here. It, nothing happens when I hover with my mouse and when I click on it. So that's a bit boring. Let's spice it up a little bit. Um, so I click mouse over and you can see a lot of the controls here switch to green. That means that all formatting I apply now um, will affect the object uh, when I have the mouse over. So for now I'm just happy with applying a little shadow to it. So I want to sort of make, make the button appear to lift from the page. So I did that. So normal looks like this, mouse over looks like this. And when I preview it, we add a smooth transition there. So it sort of seems to lift up from the page. Quite nice. And if I want to apply um, a formatting when I'm clicking the object as well, I, I click on the click tab here. I can change the color. Maybe I want to darken the, the color. S same uh, hue, but uh, darker tint, like that. Okay, so now I have normal, mouse over, and click. Let's uh, preview it. So I hover over, the shadow, shadow is there, and I click, it turns dark. That's pretty simple. But the main limitation of this system is that you can only affect the object that you're working on. This button can only make itself darker uh, or, um, and, and so on. Uh, our more advanced system is called Action Blocks, and it, this allows you to do things to make maybe this button affect other objects on the screen. Um, so just to show the principle, um, I can... Uh, Open the actions panel. You find it up here in the, in the top menu. So I get this gray bar down here and I have a number of green uh, blocks. They are called action blocks. The green ones are triggers. They will um, listen for things to happen. Um, and before you can make anything happen, you need to have a trigger. So the triggers that are available to me are click, mouse over, drag, drop, scroll, and auto start, which means it will run just when my, my uh, uh, piece of content is, is running. Um, so for now, I want to use click. So I drag a click block up here. Uh, and once I've done that, this panel opens up and I get a number of different blocks. And these are called action blocks. Um, so this is what happens after I clicked it. So to make something very simple, uh, I can just add a pop-up message. So when I click, then do a pop-up message. And I will 
re erase this and type something. Hello world. That's what I want to see. Of course, I see that we got a comment that I'm hiding some of the blocks, so okay, I will remove myself from the picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's do that. Let's free, and I can sort of. Should I slide over here, maybe? So maybe we get some extra space. If you can look how, how that looks in the in the video. Uh, I, yes, that looks good, I think. So we have a click and a pop-up message. Uh, thank you for the uh, comment, by the way. Uh, now I'm going to preview this. So I click it. Maybe we'll slide a little more here. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> like that. So it says hello world. Um, so that's a very basic example. But I can also make uh, an animation. Um, let's do something super simple. I'm just drawing a rectangle here. Uh, and when I click this button, the blue button again, uh, I don't want to show the pop-up message. So I remove that block. Instead, I add an animate block. Uh, we're going to use that uh, extensively in the, in the next couple of steps as well. Uh, the animate block is uh, quite simple in its uh, basic form, but you can do quite powerful stuff with it. So what it basically does is take you from a starting state to an ending state with a soft transition between the two. So let's say in the starting state, this is where we begin. Uh, and then in the ending state, I want this box to fly over here. Uh, you can see the box quite subtle, but you got a green border before it had a gray border. But now it has a green border uh, signaling that it ha has um, an animation on it. I also want it to turn orange, like so. Okay. So the start state and the end state. Um, so now when I click this, the, the, the orange or the, the box flew to the right side and uh, turned orange. Okay, so that's the, the foundation of, uh, of uh, weld interactivity features. Uh, so down here you have the red blocks are mainly for animation. You have yellow blocks that are for making logical things like calculations, um, conditional uh, statements, um, changing text from maybe uppercase to lowercase and things like that. Um, the purple blocks are navigation, like go to another screen, open an external website, um, even talking to an external API or sending an email. That's also feasible. And the blue blocks are for um, changing what's uh, uh, the, the appearance of objects on the screen, like getting a value from a, from a text uh, input field or uh, updating uh, a form or something like that. So that's the basics. Let's jump into the more uh, interesting uh, examples. So the first uh, example we're going to work with is an animated infographic. So let's say we want to present uh, some uh, statistics about maybe the nutritional values of eggs versus um, a lollipop. Um, so I can do that with some simple bar graph maybe. Um, and I have three categories here. So let's start with just creating um, boxes that will become the bar graphs. So I draw, I'm drawing a box here and moving it with the keyboard. I'm going to make it white and draw down the past a little bit so we get something like that. That's kind of nice. Uh, and I press Command D for du duplicate. Um, you can also find it here. Duplicate. Um, so I have three different rectangles. These will turn into bar graphs in a moment. Uh, and so to do so, 
I will um, use the animate block which you saw previously. So I'm going to remove this and start over. So I clicked on the egg uh, and basically I want this animation to happen when I have my mouse over. So I add mouse over and also an animate block. And when this animation is active, I want carbs to go up quite a bit. Uh, the eggs are also rich in protein. I don't even I don't actually have numbers. I'm just making things up here. And also quite a bit of fat. But I'm pretty sure it's healthy fat. Okay. Uh, what about the lollipop? Let's do the same thing. Entering the end state here. And lots of carbs. Protein, I'm not going to touch that. No protein. And fat, a little bit. Mainly sugar and carbs. Okay. So let's see. What I preview this. Here you can see the graphs moving up and down, depending on what object I'm hovering over. And if you're paying attention to details here, you can see that the graphs go down um, automatically when I sort of stop hovering with the mouse. And you may wonder why, why that happens, uh, because I didn't specify that. There's actually a special um, case where you have mouse over and animate in combination. Uh, if you have those blocks in combination, we will remove the animation automatically when you stop hovering over the object. So you have this effect. Okay, easy enough. Let's tackle the next um, example. It's a calculator. Any, any comments so far? Any question we should... Uh, no, no? Uh, I th we've got a question. Yeah. And I, um, it wasn't me who was the problem. Ooh. I think uh, limousine.com okay. thought that we were covering uh, the screen. Ah, okay. But we're right. not. We have, no. a, okay. we have a green screen. So everything he does, yeah. uh, is, you can see it as well. But exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're not covering anything. Uh, we have a few issues with the green screen though. So you see a little bit of a gray border, but uh, that's good. So now we can have you back in the studio. Yeah. That's great. Okay, let's let's uh, keep uh, working on the, ne the next uh, example. <laughs> so here's a little calculator that we're gonna do for um, uh, for a loan. So it could be a bank or something like that. Um, but this principle we're going to use here could be uh, applied in a product guide. So like to pick the perfect jacket or uh, the furniture that you need and so on. Basically, it's um, about listening to input from the user and presenting information back to the user. Um, so here's um, in this I have a, I have a slider. You can find the, I can, actually I can tear this down or build it right back up. So we start with a slider. You find it in the in the insert menu uh, down here. A slider. And um, then I'm gonna use an input field. Input fields, I use them quite a lot when I build calculators, actually. Some of them are visible to the user, um, and some of them are not visible and may just use for sort of keeping values um, while I'm doing my calculation. And it's also kind of convenient because I can easily toggle it between being hidden and visible. So for instance, um, I can when I'm testing my calculator, I can have it visible, and then I can um, turn it invisible when I'm when I'm ready, you find that in the effects menu and hidden, it gets a little blue border, uh, and when it's hidden, you can't see it in um, uh, in preview mode. 
or when it, when it's embedded on your site. Um, but in this case, I'm going to actually keep it visible. So the slider here, um, I can specify the default value, uh, the maximum and minimum. So maybe we should have that the minimum you can borrow is hundred dollars or euro or something, and the maximum is ten thousand, and the default is gonna be a thousand. Okay. Um, so now when I preview it, it just looks like this. I want this um, value to be visible in the in the input field below. So. Um, I can double click here and add a placeholder and call it uh, amount. Um, but to get the value from the slider into the text field, I will have uh, an action block. And the action block I'm going to use is called change value. So whenever you change a value on a slider, on an input field, or a drop down, this will trigger. And it won't do much. It will just take the value and set this value into the text field. And if I click the, the little uh, settings button for this block, I can see that I have a destination object and I can use the purple arrow here and click on amount. And it says input 364. That's the ID for the input field. And the value uh, is using a special kind of um, expression here. It says previews, which mean it will take whatever is coming uh, higher up in the chain of action blocks. In this case, it's just the slider value. And that's all it takes. So now in a preview, you can see that it sort of changes the value underneath. Um, okay, let's. Uh, but now I want to do um, actually see what what my uh, int monthly interest is going to be. So I duplicate this um, object, pull down, and I'll call this interest. Uh, so now. When I run it, this is updated. This is not updated yet. So to update the interest, I could add more action blocks to um, to the first chain that I started on. But to show you uh, how you can sort of chain things and create chain reactions in Weld, uh, I will actually create the action block here on the amount box. Um, so I attach change value here. So when amount is changed, I want to make a calculation. So I add a yellow, yellow uh, calculate block. The calculation I want to do is taking the previous value and multiply it by 10% or 0 0.1. And then I want to output this value into the second box. And I use the purple arrow to select the box. Okay, let's run this. So now you can see this is being updated and and also this is uh, being updated, 10% uh, of that. Uh, and since I linked this box to this field, I can also change this manually, like 10, 100, 1000, etc. However, the slider doesn't jump, uh, uh, unfortunately. To, to make that happen, we would have to add a second uh, action block. And of course, the, um, the value doesn't have to be outputted into a, an input field. Sometimes from, for design uh, reasons or something, you want just a normal text object and that works as well. So um, 
I just make a text object here, make it bigger. See how big is it now? Quite big. Um, and so I just remap. So when this calculation is done, I want it to output here instead. Let's see how that works. And that works in a similar fashion. All right, so that now done uh, second um, challenge. So third thing I wanna show you uh, is a little more tricky. We're gonna do a quiz. Um, and I just want to show you the, uh, the fundamentals here and you can add to it. Um, and so basically I have a picture of a car here. Uh, it's not going to be a very difficult quiz. Um, so uh, the user will have to try to guess what's in the image. Um, and um, what, what, so I mentioned before that I sometimes use hidden input fields and that's the method we're going to use here. Uh, for, for debugging reasons, uh, I will, uh, when we test this, I'm going to keep it visible and then when, when we're done, I'm going to hide it. So basically, um, the car is the right word here. So when I click on the word car, I want to give the user one point. Uh, and it's easy. So I basically just click and set value. And um, instead of previous value, I set one. No, not that one. So when I click it, it it puts a one in the box here. And just to make sure I want uh, this box to be zero uh, from, the, from the beginning. So um, I'm gonna add, use one of those uh, auto start blocks and uh, set value and click on myself and then the value is gonna be zero. Okay, so now it says zero here, and when I click this one, nothing happens. Click this one, nothing happens. When I click car, it becomes a one. Okay. Uh, I should make this a little bit bigger as well, so you can see what's happening inside them. And, um, Let's say I add a second question. I'm gonna change one of the options to a panda. Um, and make sure we have the right, I want to remove that block. Panda on the other hand should have uh, give a score of one to and put it in this box. And this box should be also reset when I start. Okay, let's see what happens. So zero points there, zero points there. If I click Panda, I get one point. The other ones don't work. If I click bike, nothing happens. Boat, nothing happens. Car, I get one point. Okay. And I, then I want to summarize the quiz, the points to uh, a total. Um, And um, so when, uh, when um, uh, this value is updated, uh, 
uh, I want to do a calculation and uh, take the previous value and add it with this one and output the value to the total box down below. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, one there, but when I click Panda here, I don't get an update. So I need a last block as well here. Uh, so when this is updated to, I want to calculate the sum of these two and output the results. Okay, let's see. Uh, zero, zero, zero. Click car, I get one point. Click panda, I get two points. So that way you can calculate the total for the quiz. And now when I'm happy with this, uh, I can of course hide the two um, um, fields on the side here. Uh, I don't need them to be visible to the user. So again, pressing car, get one point down here. Pressing panda. I get two points. Okay, it's still quite a simple example, but you can of course build on this and make it more complex if you want. Uh, that's what I plan to show in this webinar. So we've looked at three different examples of interactive content. Yeah. Um, let's jump back to the presentation. Uh, Uh, did we get any more questions from from uh, the chat? Or, uh, we or got good? a question. Yeah. Uh, yes, if we work with Wix, which we don't, uh, right? Uh, actually, you can use uh, well, okay. Wix. Yes. So uh, Wix is basically uh, a CMS like many others. So you, you can embed uh, a weld clip uh, okay. into into Wix as well. Yeah. Um, and then on pricing, uh, we are just updating our pricing. So uh, send us an email. Exactly, send us an email. Uh, Sell at Weld.io or Tom at Weld.io, uh, and we'll you'll get uh, the the latest prices. Um, I also want to recommend you to go on uh, Weld.io where you can try the tool for free for two weeks. Uh, you'll also find plenty of other videos and tutorials and so on where you can see how we do responsive content how you work with images and typography on the web and so on. And you can learn quite a lot. Yes. So, so that's, all, uh, that's all for now. Yeah. I thank you for watching. You something. And as Tom said, just email us for any question. Goodbye. Goodbye.